That deal on your Disney World vacation may not be as good as you think it is. Disney's keeping a lot of secrets and we're busting the door wide open on what they don't want you to see today on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. The Disney World is a stage and everything on that stage is picture perfect. It's a tough job keeping up those appearances, but Disney does a great job at it by hiding tons of stuff from their guests. Today we're talking about the literal behind the scenes of Disney parks from sneaky marketing to what goes on in the parks at 3 a.m. First up, it's time to head backstage where Disney is always hiding how the sausage is made or how they make everything run so smoothly from the guest's perspective. We talked about the Utilidors on the channel before, the tunnels underneath the Magic Kingdom that are home to costuming departments, employee cafeterias, everything Disney doesn't want you to see. Now, the Utilidors are just the most well-known backstage areas in Disney World. Each park has extensive backstage and employee-only areas hidden away from guests. No pictures are allowed backstage, so even if you end up in an extra long ride line that snakes backstage, this has happened to us in the line for Rise of the Resistance before, don't take out that camera to take photos. They're not allowed. Plus, backstage is actually a lot more boring than you might expect. Disney uses scrims and a very specific shade of paint to keep backstage areas from drawing too much attention as well. Go Away Green is a muted shade of green that you'll see on doors leading to backstage areas. It's supposedly so unassuming that your eyes will just go right over the color in favor of something more eye-catching. So what's happening backstage that Disney doesn't want you to see? Well, cast members eating lunch, racks of costumes, filing cabinets, carts delivering ingredients to restaurants, fixing ride props, even painting trash cans. All the boring, tedious stuff that is part of making the magic happen. Now, if you want to see what goes on back there for yourself, Disney offers a few backstage tours that take you into the Utilidors or other backstage areas of Disney World. You won't get to see everything, but you'll get to see a bit of the behind the scenes work in action. The next thing Disney doesn't want you to see or know is of course what happens in the middle of the night. Everything on stage needs to be perfect and that means a lot of rehearsal time for performers and a lot of maintenance work. All of that happens behind the scenes away from guests and sometimes that means work needs to happen in the middle of the night. If there's a new show or parade, even the yearly Halloween and Christmas parades, performers need to practice their choreography and know the route by heart because every single performance has to be exactly the same. Most of the practice and prep for parades and shows happens way backstage in Disney's rehearsal studios, but as the premiere date nears, the show will move into dress rehearsals, which need to be practiced in the actual show space. These final dress rehearsals will take place on the parade route or on the show stage after hours, like at 3 a.m. when guests are out of the park. Cleaning and maintenance are also primarily done overnight so that it doesn't impact the park when things are up and running. Power washing, painting, and other touch-ups, that all needs to be done almost daily. Disney is known as one of the cleanest theme parks in the world, and it takes a lot of work to keep that up. You'll see plenty of cleaning happening during the day, but all that deep cleaning happens when the parks are empty. You may also see wet paint signs, but the majority of touch-up and construction work in the parks happens at night. Epcot festivals are installed overnight. You won't see the festival booths being moved into place in the middle of the day. The same goes for visible construction projects. In Animal Kingdom, they'll build animal enclosures in the middle of the night rather than during the day when guests are in the parks. It's not very magical to watch people building stuff, but it is definitely magical to visit Epcot one day and come back the next to a fully installed festival. Or have it be Halloween in the Magic Kingdom one day and the next day it's suddenly Christmas. Now something else Disney does not want you to know, that souvenir might be way cheaper online. You're definitely going to buy souvenirs when you're on vacation, it's a rite of passage, but if it's something you're a little on the fence about or something a little more expensive that you were planning on, check to see if you can find that item cheaper online. Disney has started selling parks merchandise on Shop Disney, and sometimes those items are eligible for promotions and discounts, or at least free shipping. If it's something larger that might not fit in your suitcase, see if there's a free shipping promo on Shop Disney. You can ship items home from the parks or your resort, but you'll need to pay a shipping fee. If it's on Shop Disney, you can skip paying that. Sometimes you can find Disney souvenirs on Amazon as well. We found this hilarious spitting camel hat for sale in Animal Kingdom. It's $44.99 in the park, but it's just $17.99 on Amazon. That's a serious discount. And don't forget, you can also find things like magic bands online, either at Shop Disney or on Amazon.com. 
Okay, something else that Disney doesn't want you to know from a pricing perspective, the Disney dining plan, that isn't priced for your benefit. Now, I know this is a hot topic. I know a lot of you absolutely love the Disney dining plan, but you gotta know that Disney isn't handing you an awesome freebie here, even when they're offering free dining promotions. The Disney dining plan is a way to basically prepay for your food in Disney World. There are a few different breakdowns, but basically you pay up front when you book for a certain number of dining credits which you can exchange for meals and snacks on your vacation. By the way, Disney has currently paused the Disney dining plan following the parks reopening, and we have yet to hear when it may come back. But we're pretty sure it will, and when it does, I always encourage you to crunch the numbers when you're considering booking the Disney dining plan. It can end up being a pretty good deal if you're eating at the right restaurants, ordering the right things, and using up every single dining credit that you purchased. But Disney does the number crunching too, and they're definitely coming out ahead by having guests prepay to lock in all of their dining money. They know how much people typically spend on food, and the dining plan offers a lot of food. Sometimes it's too much. Is everyone you're traveling with really gonna eat two snacks per day on top of all those meals? It may be easier to prepay and make your Disney trip a little more all-inclusive, but it isn't always cheaper than paying out of pocket, which is sometimes the feeling people seem to have when they book the Disney dining plan. You really do have to work hard to get a lot of value out of that dining plan. You've gotta order the most expensive dishes, and again, you've gotta use every single dining credit. Whether you're using the Disney dining plan or not, we're here to help you get the most out of all of your meals at Disney World. We have tons of blog posts and videos giving you all the details on how to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to those snacks and restaurants. But if you want a really in-depth guide that's gonna help you budget, plan, and decide if the dining plan is for you, pick up a copy of the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. It's an ebook that we sell here at DFB. It's over 700 pages of information, everything you'd ever need to know about eating in Disney World, cultivated from our team's combined decades of firsthand research. It's updated multiple times a year. Just head to dfbstore.com, pick up a copy for yourself. It comes with a money back guarantee, so if it's not helpful, you can get your money back right away, no problem. But yeah, Disney's smart. They're not going to price the Disney dining plan in a place that makes sense for you. They're gonna price it in a place that makes sense for them. Don't ever forget that they're a company, they've done their research, and they know how much you're gonna eat in Disney World. It's probably not as much as you're paying for. Another thing Disney doesn't necessarily want you to know, not that they're trying to hide it necessarily, but it is kind of creepy. You're always being watched. Maybe you've been backstage before and snapped a quick picture thinking, it's okay, no one saw me. Well, someone definitely saw you. You're always being watched in Disney World. It sounds way creepy, but it is true. There are hidden cameras and plainclothes security officers all over the parks. Even when you think you're not on camera, you're probably on camera. This is primarily to keep you safe, not to create some Disney dystopia. A lot of cameras are on rides, even dark rides, when you might not be able to see them. That's to make sure guests are safe through the entire duration of the ride. If someone stands up on a ride or tries to get out of a moving ride vehicle, cast members need to be able to see that someone is at risk so they can stop the ride. This is also a reminder to please behave yourselves on rides or cast members will have to stop them. Speaking of cast members, Disney is all about making things appear picture perfect, and that includes the look of their employees too. Did you know that cast members are held to very, very rigorous presentation standards? Things have relaxed a bit in recent years, but cast members still have to comply with very specific Disney look guidelines. Hair must always be a natural color that looks like it grew out of your head, and if your roots are showing, you'll need to get it touched up fast. Hair must also always be styled in a professional manner, and men can't have hair longer than their ears or the back of their collar. Men can now have a one-inch beard or mustache, and they're allowed to have visible stubble while growing it out. Stubble used to be a big no-no. You'd have to grow it out while on vacation. Nails must be kept short, well manicured, and if painted, that color needs to be neutral and complement your costume. Bright colored makeup is a no-go and jewelry must be kept super simple. Allowable jewelry got an update along with the one inch beard rule. Now cast members can wear one simple necklace or bracelet in addition to a simple pair of earrings. No extra piercings are allowed beyond a single ear piercing and visible tattoos are not allowed. Cast members can cover tattoos with long sleeves or makeup. Now our next one might answer a few questions for some of you. Did you know that Disney actually does use a code language? When you're in Disney, you might come across some backstage secrets right in front of you and have no idea. And that's because cast members sometimes speak in code. 
Codes are typically used for things that Disney wants to keep behind the scenes. Ride malfunctions, lost kids, emergency cleanups, things like that. 101 means that a ride is temporarily not running, while code 102 means it's back up and moving again. Code V is when someone loses their lunch, V for vomit. This one is also sometimes called a protein spill. A signal 70 is used when cast members are looking for a lost parent. I've talked about it before, when a child and parent get separated in the park, it's the parent who's lost because the kid is right there safely waiting with a cast member. Even the terms cast member, guest, backstage, all of that is part of the Disney code designed to keep the show rolling. Now this next one is one we've talked about before, but I think it's really, really important, especially as you're starting to book your 2021 and 2022 vacations. This is another sneaky marketing tactic that Disney uses all the time. It's not necessarily a bad deal, but it's kind of in line with a BOGO sale when you didn't really need two of something. Always check the fine print on your vacation package. You may not need to book the advertised number of nights to get the discount. Disney usually has several promotions running at the same time, but one of them is usually gonna be a full room and ticket package. You'll get emails and see commercials advertising a five day, four night stay for X dollars for a family of four. Now, if you were only planning a three or four day trip, but see an advertised five day deal, and it's not too much more than your shorter trip, you might go ahead and just spring for the extra day because that's what the deal is, right? Wrong. You can almost always book those deals for fewer nights than the sample booking. Always check what the actual terms of the deal are and don't feel obligated to book more nights just because Disney is advertising that many nights. Like I said, they're smart. They're gonna advertise more nights than the minimum deal so that most people will book that many nights. That means Disney gets a couple extra nights of hotel booking from thousands of people just due to a simple marketing tactic. Also, when you're pricing out your trip, make sure to look at all the discounts, not just the main one that Disney's pushing right now. Disney doesn't make their discounts inaccessible, but they do kind of hide them on the website. The special offers tab is definitely not front and center, and you could be missing out on a great room discount if you're only looking at the advertised vacation package. If you're not sure where to start, you can always enlist the help of a Disney travel agent to help you navigate all the available deals and find the one that works best for you. We always use Small World Vacations because they're super knowledgeable and can help you plan an awesome trip and save the most money. So definitely give yourself the chance to save more if you can. And finally, the last thing Disney really doesn't want you to know, those potential opening dates. We've been waiting for the release of an official opening date for Space 220 since the end of 2019. The date has been pushed back a few times and now is just posted as the perpetual coming soon, which is also the tagline for Avengers Campus and Disney California Adventure right now. Even Remy's Ratatouille Adventure has a sign up that says a vague opening 2021. If you've ever had work done on your house or tried to build something yourself, you know how much can go wrong and you kind of know what Disney's doing here. That's why Disney always gives opening seasons or just doesn't mention opening time frame at all. It's not so much a desire to keep guests in the dark as it is an opportunity to cover themselves in case something goes wrong and they have to extend the opening until later. It can be very frustrating for guests trying to plan trips when they don't have those opening dates, but it would be a lot worse if you booked a trip for the opening of a ride and then it was postponed and you couldn't get your money back. We're always tracking the latest updates, so if you want to know as soon as a ride and restaurant opening date is released, sign up for our totally free newsletter. We send out all the big news right away and it'll come straight to your inbox so you can be one of the first to know. But yeah, that's why Disney is not very forthcoming about those opening dates. Things can always go wrong and things can go wrong right up until the last minute. So you often won't get a specific opening date for something until they're real, real sure it's gonna happen that day. And yep, Disney is one big production that entertains guests from park open to park close, and sometimes that means hiding things out of sight. Would it be great if we knew from day one of construction when Disney hopes to open their next ride? Honestly, probably not, because we'd end up following all the date changes along with the construction team. Most of the stuff Disney doesn't want you to know keeps the machine chugging along. I do wish it were a little easier to find great deals on hotel rooms and vacation packages, but hey, that's what we're here for, to make sure you don't miss out on all the under the radar discounts that might be able to save you a lot of money on your next vacation. So yeah, Disney's sneaky, but sometimes that's what keeps the magic alive. Thank you guys for listening. Thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.